Let's face it, human beings are only around because we showed up at the right place at the right time. Before we came along, there were things that would have completely destroyed us on site. Here are a few that would probably destroy human life as we know it if they showed up today. If you thought Jaws was the worst thing in the ocean, take a look at this guy. Even his name is horrifying because the Chronosaurus was named after Kronos, the Greek titan who ate his own children. Chronosaurus was a marine reptile that lived 120 million years ago, measured roughly 33 feet from snout to tail, and probably weighed between 7 to 10 tons. By comparison, the largest known great white shark is about 20 feet long and weighs in at 2 tons. Chronosaurus' teeth weren't as sharp as a great white's, but it made up for that with brawn and speed. Scientists think that it was an especially fast hunter that probably killed by crushing and shaking its prey. According to fossil records, it was big enough to prey on plesiosaurs and strong enough to crush turtle shells. So what would it mean for modern humans if this terrifying creature suddenly reappeared in the oceans around the world? Well, it would probably wreck your 15-foot sailboat and it definitely wouldn't hesitate to eat a 7-foot surfboard and anyone on it. So say goodbye to that beach vacation. The F-104 Starfighter has a wingspan of just under 22 feet. So did the giant Teratorn. That's right, a bird that was literally the size of a fighter plane. If this creature existed today, you would probably just not want to go outside, ever. Records show that the giant Teratorn lived in Argentina roughly 6 million years ago. It was a vulture, but didn't eat just carrion. Scientists think it also consumed large rodents, small armadillos, and even camels. Granted, the camels of 6 million years ago were only the size of a large deer. That's still a pretty big target for any kind of bird. The giant Teratorn isn't even the largest bird that ever lived. That honor belongs to Pelagornis sandersi, which had a whopping 24-foot wingspan. If the Demogorgon of Stranger Things haunts your nightmares, consider this. The Gorgonops was kind of the real-life thing. Gorgonops is Greek for dreadful face, and it had a similar sort of reputation when it actually existed. Fossil records show that this thing could reach roughly 10 feet in length. It wasn't a reptile, but it wasn't a mammal either. It was a primitive therapsid, a less cuddly version of today's mammals. It had huge canine teeth like a saber-toothed cat and was one of Africa's key predators during the Permian period. The Gorgonops might have been warm-blooded and was probably fast on its feet. Its enormous canines would have been well-equipped to tear through the thick hides of most of the herbivores that lived at the time, so a slow, thin-skinned human being would be no match. Just one more reason to never go outside. The largest snake alive today is the giant anaconda, which grows to an average 17 feet and can weigh around 550 pounds. But as horrifying as the idea of a 550-pound snake is, it's only about 22% as horrifying as a 2,500-pound snake. At 42 feet, Titanoboa was only marginally longer than the longest living anaconda at the time, but it was nearly a ton heavier. Historical evidence shows that if you stood next to one of these things, it would theoretically come up to your waist. If you actually stood next to it, it might just eat you. Scientists think that the Titanoboa grew to the size that it was because of generally warmer climates on Earth at the time of the Paleocene Epoch. If there was ever an argument for fighting climate change, even bigger snakes are probably at the top of that list. If this creature were roaming around today, it's unlikely that any living creature would be totally safe from this carnivore. While the structures in its head suggest that it mostly ate fish, it's not confirmed that it's the only thing they ate. Better to not find out. Sure, Chronosaurus was terrifying, but there was another sea creature that could have had a Chronosaurus for a snack. That horrifying sea creature was called the Megalodon, which you might know from the fake Discovery Channel documentaries like Megalodon, The Monster Shark Lives, or movies like The Meg. We don't have to tell you all the many ways that the Megalodon, if it still existed, would not hesitate to wreck stuff with its massive teeth. Megalodon roamed the seas for about 2 million years, but since Chronosaurus lived 100 million years before the earliest evidence of Megalodon, we'll sadly never find out who would win in a fight. Odds are on the Megalodon, though. Some scientists believe that Megalodon might have been as much as 80 feet long, though others think that the Megalodon wasn't actually any bigger than Chronosaurus, which would probably be pretty frightening. Still, a 33-foot shark is 11 feet larger than the largest known great white, so it would just be one more way to ruin your summer. It's all in the name. Terror birds, or forest racidae if you're fancy, which roughly translates to bearer of scars. Whether or not the bird was giving out the scars or was just battle-torn itself isn't really known. 
These flightless birds were basically just feathered, beaked velociraptors without the screen presence. The terror bird became South America's top predator and reigned for nearly 60 million years, finally disappearing from the fossil record around the same time as a megalodon. Fossil records show a beak shape that would stab straight into their prey and, in some cases, swallow them whole. One of the largest of these nightmarish creatures was the Titanus, which was over 6 feet tall, had a presumed top speed of around 43 miles per hour, and could snap the leg of a cow with its leg strength. Like many of these giant monsters, the Dunkleosteus spent all of its time in the water, so it may not be such a big deal for surface-dwelling creatures. But considering that 71% of the Earth is covered with water, that's a lot of space to be considered off-limits. Unlike many of these creatures, its name doesn't mean anything horrifying. The Dunkleosteus is named after a paleontologist named David Dunkel, but don't let the name fool you. The Dunkleosteus made piranhas look like goldfish. Dunkleosteus predates even dinosaurs, having lived 360 million years ago. It could grow up to 29 feet long, and its head was covered with thick, bony plates, which ended in super sharp fangs. Their bone structure suggests that they could open and close their jaws in milliseconds, with enough force to stab through any exoskeleton. And while adults lived in the deep sea and probably wouldn't encounter any humans, younger Dunkleosteus specimens have been found in shallow waters where people might just swim. So, in a world where Dunkleosteus still lived, entering the water without a sense of foreboding would be pretty much off the table. It's some small comfort that the Haas Eagle was on its way out as the Earth's population of human beings exploded. And it's a good thing, too, because if more of these had been roaming around at the same time as our hairy ancestors, we might not be around today. The Haas Eagle lived in New Zealand and was still flying around as recently as 500 or 600 years ago. Haas Eagle had a wingspan of nearly 10 feet and an arrangement of feet and claws that rivaled a modern tiger. It probably ate moa, which were large flightless birds that became extinct around the same time as the Haas Eagle did. By way of comparison, a 33-pound Haas Eagle was ferocious enough to take down a 510-pound moa, causing death by blood loss and tearing organs from its prey. Here's where it gets actually scary. Native New Zealanders have an oral tradition that includes descriptions of the pakeoi, a bird that would attack and kill humans. Today, we're pretty sure that bird was the Haas Eagle, so we don't even have to imagine the ways this predator might have been dangerous to people because it actually was. Grizzly bears are typically only between 5 and 8 feet tall when standing upright, which is already pretty scary if you're facing one down. If you ever met a short-faced bear, though, forget it. The short-faced bear was 12 feet tall when standing upright and could weigh up to a ton. An adult was capable of killing a bison, which is way heavier than you are and also way, way faster than you, too. More recent studies have classified this bear as an opportunistic omnivore, meaning it would both kill its own food and steal whatever you were eating, too, making it unpredictable. Like the Haas Eagle, the short-faced bear shared its territory with humans, so it was almost certainly a major threat to the early people of North America. It died out roughly 11,000 years ago, though, which is unfortunate from a species diversity perspective, but pretty fortunate for the camping industry, because nobody would be camping if 12-foot-tall eating machines were roaming the woods. Contrary to popular belief, the T-Rex wasn't the biggest, baddest 70-ton dinosaur to ever walk the Earth. That honor goes to the Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, which was 50 feet long. Compare that to the T-Rex, which was a mere 40 feet long. Besides its hearty appetite, the Spinosaurus didn't really have a whole lot in common with its smaller cousin. It was a quadruped, and it's the only carnivorous dinosaur we know of that walked on four legs instead of two. It was also semi-aquatic and preferred to eat water-dwelling creatures like sharks and crocodiles and other gigantic prehistoric fish. Sure, some dinosaurs were bigger than the Spinosaurus, but they weren't predators, and because Spinosaurus would also hunt on land, nobody was really safe. Part alligator and part shark, it's not something modern humans would want to deal with. Who would win in a fight between the T-Rex and the Spinosaurus? Look no further than Jurassic Park 3. Don't let the cheerful name fool you. The smile part of Smilodon doesn't refer to the animal's cheerful disposition, but the Greek word for smile meaning scalpel. Those scalpel teeth were an inch shy of a foot long and hung over Smilodon's bottom lip like the world's most terrifying overbite. Otherwise known as the saber-toothed tiger, Smilodon was not actually a tiger or really even closely related to one. Instead, it was a member of his subfamily that were the forerunners of modern felines. They were also agile enough to take down large prey like bison and probably even juvenile mastodons. Early humans were unfortunate enough to share habitat with Smilodons, which weren't just scary because of their teeth, but also because the biggest Smilodons were roughly chest-high on an average-sized adult human male and weighed over 800 pounds. Scientists don't agree on whether they chased or ambushed their prey, but 
quite honestly, who cares, because neither alternative would really make you feel great about going for a stroll. There are roughly 1.2 million scorpion stings across the world every year, and from those, 3,250 deaths. Scorpions kill 10 times more people than snakes, so if you live anywhere near them, you're also keenly aware of how dangerous they can be. The good news is that modern scorpions generally aren't huge, unless you're talking about the giant forest scorpion, which can reach 9 inches in length. But compared to the pulmonoscorpius, that's nothing. The pulmonoscorpius could grow to a whopping 28 inches long, which is roughly the length of a small raccoon from nose to tail. If pulmonoscorpius existed today, it's hard to predict exactly what sort of havoc it could wreak on the modern world, but at one point in history, it lived in the area of Scotland. Scientists don't really know how venomous it was, but just based on size alone and on the fact that all scorpions have venom, it's probably safe to say that its mere presence would be enough to cause some trouble, even though it wasn't known to prey on anything larger than small arthropods. And because it was possibly an ambush predator, it could strike from anywhere at any time. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more messed up history videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.